Hey y'all, I wasn't prepared to give this, but I guess this is going to be a part three to my um most recent post. Lord help me with this. Um, I really didn't want to give it, but as I was in prayer today, asking God what I should talk about, he wanted me to elaborate more on the part two and about, um, and about Satan's schemes and all, so, um, yeah. So I know in my most recent video, I spoke on how God showed me, well, God was speaking through me, and basically God showed me um, the enemy's tactic to like the whole targeting of a woman's scheme and all that stuff. So basically, the reason why the enemy was targeting women, um, again, months before God revealed this to me, even though God gave man a word, he always did his works through a woman. So just like Adam and Eve, God gave Adam a word to do, but he created Eve to be the answer to Adam's problem. Also, just like Abraham and Sarah, even though God gave Abraham a word, God actually used Sarah to birth two whole nations. Um, just like with Esther, anytime God is doing something big, he always uses a woman. and He, he uses a man too, but he does his work through a woman. So, especially when it comes down to like covenant, like Jesus was a part of that covenant, Abraham's seed, Jacob's seed, all that stuff. Supernatural work will be through a woman of that covenant. So, this is the time where God is freeing his nations. This is the time where God is revealing knowledge, mysteries to people. And he's going to use women specifically to put that highlight pain on the world, to influence the world, to do his greatest move on this entire globe before the world ends. So, that's why um the enemy was targeting women now mind you before i had that dream and um before all that stuff in the video came about days 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 before um i was watching this video it was about a prophetess because this is where it all began about like be careful what you're saying and on top of the dreams i was watching a girl who was prophesying and everything she said confirmed it was like god was directly speaking to me but also she was talking about how um at the end of her video she was like ladies make sure you guys um be safe you know don't go outside your houses um make sure you guys just be safe at the end of the video i didn't really take much notice to that because i knew you know i kind of knew the get go the get go like everything and also this is also connected to my earlier videos about god telling you to go now even though i feel shameful about saying this but even though god did very well give me the word i was procrastinating because i was trying to find um man like ways that is contrary to god people kept telling me uh so like god used prophets um people who were confirming god's word to me were telling me don't keep trying to follow these ways that's contrary to what god is calling you to do just obey god you know and so on that video where god was saying go now like instantly and your consistent instant obedience will make you blessed um, also, I'm hearing God say, elevate you to be known and seen. So, God bless you, you know, on that too. I pray that God uses you. Well, everything was going good. I was like, you know what? I know I need to move, but I still got stuff I need to figure out. So, and so forth. So, I was like, I'm going to move. I'm going to move. You know, just not, just not yet, you know? And so, um, I wasn't instantly obedient. So, later on that night, God is so great. Um, later on that night, because I was trying to figure out what the heck was going on. Later on that night, um, I saw a guy, like, pull up to where I was and, he came straight towards me, but he didn't know I was in my car because usually I'll go in my car to pray and everything. He didn't know I was in my car, but he came straight up towards me. Like he was, he was going to do something like his hand, one hand was in the back and then he came straight up towards me with another hand. I look at him and when he looked back at me, he was so scared and he looked, he looked up at the guy at the sidewalk who was walking with a red umbrella. I don't think I'll ever forget that moment. Um, so he was walking, he looked at the guy who was walking with a red umbrella, who was walking straight forward. And basically, um, Basically, uh, so I looked at him as he was walking back because he looked so scared. And then I looked at the guy with the umbrella walking forward. I automatically assumed that the guy with the umbrella who was uh, my skin color, the darker, was a part of that. But then as I was looking back and forth from the two guys, I kind of knew from the guy's face and how he was walking. He looked more traumatized, more scared, but yet angry at the guy more than he was looking at me. So I was like, okay, maybe he's not. I don't know if this is an angel. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> like his face was kind of barred up. Like I don't know what was going on. So I, of course, was scared. I was looking all around. Me. I'm like, what the heck? Okay, she just gave me a video. Now this is happening. Like, what the heck is going on? Lord? I'm like, so scared. Right now. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I know this gotta be a joke. I know this gotta be a joke. And um, so, how do I put this? Also, um, God, because God is up there. He keeps confirming stuff. He said that um, you will be in a season where you're going to be vulnerable. Like, he's going to put you in a place where you're vulnerable. You got to tell your story. And you're going to be famous and known. And God cares about this. And he's going to protect you through this. I didn't know that months before that this was what he was talking about, about being vulnerable. And it kind of go with my dream because 
kind of as God leads me, I would talk to people and I would talk out loud and other people would hear me. So that would draw more of an attention to me. But I did not know that that spirit was on them and that they were like literally trying to target me. Mind you, I didn't want to talk about this just yet, but yeah, I wasn't instantly obedient. And um, so time and time went on. Um, and then I remember driving down one night a road and basically I saw these two cars. Immediately my spirit was troubled. Like immediately my spirit was troubled because I was driving, I was like in my car, but I saw these two cars and they honked. Like they honked at each other. I looked back and they honked at each other. One went one way, the other one went the opposite way. So I immediately left because I didn't know what was going on. So I was driving um, down. Mind you, I couldn't really see the color of the car because it was like late. So I was trying to drive down and then I went back around, but as I was going straight, like as I was driving straight, I saw this car kind of just speed up behind me. And um, so I was feeling I was trying to get past this car because I'm like, is this guy, what's wrong with him? Like, why is he speeding up behind me? And so I moved to the other lane, which I actually never did, but I moved to the other lane. And basically, um, I moved to the other lane, but I was speeding up. So basically this car, there was a guy in this car and he sp speed up right beside me. And he looked straight at me like that, like very evil look in his eyes. I couldn't really understand what was going on. Um, I believe it was it has something to do with the music that we are listening to now that is like causing that to happen. But basically, um, I remember that. And then I did speed up a little bit in front of him. And then right behind him, there was another car, but it was a girl in the car. So it was another female right behind him. I don't know what was going on. I don't know if I was being watched. I don't know. She looked at me like she was trying to wink at me or something. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. And then the car just left. He turned the other side. So. And then I followed God's word because he told me just just go here. Like he was telling me where to go. And so I followed his signal. And basically I was like scared. I didn't know what was going on. I was like, Lord, why is this happening? Like what is going on? Like, you know, and then um, God was reminding me, yeah, if you let it stay longer, the enemy would have used that against you. If you let it schemed up and used that against you, like your biggest fears. I was getting tormented by my biggest fears because um, something like that happened when I was like really young, where I was walking to school by myself and I would see the same guy walk right behind me as I was walking to school, and I was so scared, and that happened four times at that age, and I was so scared, good thing nothing happened to me, but mind you, that that thought kept replaying in my mind as I was, like, walking to school by myself, and it took a whole few years, not even months, it took a whole few years for me to, like, get outside of that and, like, trust that God, you know, was going to protect me and nothing like that was going to happen to me again. It's amazing how um, stuff will keep com confirming itself. I can't talk. It's amazing how stuff will keep confirming itself, and, you know, like, something is growing, like, something is you know, bad in this world, but fear not, God is with you, he's going to protect you, and so, I'm like, Lord, now I know you deliver me from this fear, like, what is going on, and then I realized I wasn't instantly obedient, and that was where the enemy was scheming up, that kind of showed me what the enemy was planning to do while I was in that area, and even though I was in the calling that I was in, and I was doing what God called me to do, I wasn't in the right area, which means just like how Paul wasn't in the right area, and he was thrown into prison and beaten really badly, because you're not in the right area, it opens the door for the enemy to plot a scheme against you, even throughout that calling because it leads you to being famous and known and so God cares about that and he wants to protect you throughout that whole journey on top of the dream and you know I didn't know that at first I had to I had to go to God because I was like scared I was like my mind is tormenting me like years of stuff is going on I can't even drive down the road and feel safe with a car going behind me and not feel like traumatized thinking like is this person out to get me or am I okay so you know and it's so weird because I was growing up, I always wondered why my brothers would do that. Like they would, they would walk with me to school and back, but at the same time, they would look down and then look up and then look side to side to see if somebody was looking at them. And I was like, what is wrong with you? Ain't nobody looking at you. Don't nobody know who we are. Like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> and like one moment could cause you to get like that, you know? So I was like scared. I was like, I don't want to drive. I'm going to drive this way. Because <laughs> I'm like, these people know what they're doing. I don't know if they're in a the gang. I don't know what the heck was going on. And I'm like, they know when they try to you know, scare you. They're going to scare you because you don't know who they are. They're just hidden. They're just, you know, dark. It was just darkness. And so it's so weird because I knew that spirit, but I didn't know that spirit until that dream came. So until I had that dream and until it started making sense about what God was showing me a while ago, it's like I could recognize the spirit itself, but I didn't know where it was coming from. I was like, oh, you probably just, you know, whatever. I don't know. I don't know. You're probably just going through something. I don't know. But yeah, that was that was what was going on, and I wasn't aware of that until after. So eventually, that's why when I spoke about that dream that God wanted me to speak about, I was on a train because now I'm like, okay, I really have to be instantly obedient. You know, like I cannot wait, I cannot put God on hold. That is it, Lord. You got my a okay, okay. You got my a okay. That is not gonna have to get. And so, um, 
I tell her because I could hear the words that they were saying, but I didn't understand what they were saying. They're like, allow the enemy, don't allow the enemy to give you alternate answers to stuff that's contrary to what God is calling you to do. And I'm, I'm like, I'm already doing what God is calling me to do. But I was trying to figure out a way of profiting in order to get that. I was like, okay, let me do this first. Let me do that first, which was delaying me. And that was exactly not what God was calling you to do on top of, you know, being like places where you really shouldn't have um, been at. So, whew. I was like, Lord, I really don't want to do this out right now. Like, I just don't. Like, it's so, it's just so much to it. And I'm like, I'm grateful, but like, I seriously feel for girls who go through that because of what happened when I was that age, that young age, and I was walking to school, and a guy was following behind me four times, asking me to just give him a hug. And I was like, no, and I was praying in tongues, and I was putting run. You know, I was just scared. And he was just asking me to give him a hug. And then from that point forward, after the four times, I asked my brother to walk with me um, places. So I knew I couldn't walk alone anymore and like stuff like that. So yeah, y'all be careful. Um, like seriously, be careful. Um, it is it is dangerous out here, okay? It is, these are the last days. I just tell you that these are the last days. And um, so I had to actually come in authority and pray like I've never prayed before for those girls who are victimized and stuff like that. And I thank God for that woman car that was behind him because when he speed up, she was right behind him. And then um, I thank God for her because um, I didn't know who that person was. I mean, in a way, they kind of all look the same when it's dark because he was a darker skin, you know, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, and then they give you that look, you know, and it's like, I don't know why they're angry. I don't know what's going on. I just, I don't know. Okay, I don't know. I give it to God. Okay, like, I literally did not know what the heck was going on. I was just praying that God had mercy on me because I didn't have no weapons, nothing, nothing. And, um, yeah, my spirit was traumatized from that point forward. And so that was before I became instantly obedient and actually um, heard God on what it was that he was calling me to do and actually did it. And so now I encourage y'all to be instantly obedient, to pray, 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 um, you know, and be careful. The enemy can come in any way, shape, or form just to get a loophole in your in your life, you know, just to get a loophole in your life. You never know. You never know. That's why the spirit of discernment is super important, especially when you're coming to a place where you're going to be famed and known and vulnerable. It's darkness all around, okay? It's darkness all around, and be really careful. Um, be wise as serpents. Exactly what Shannon said. Okay, I'm done. God bless you. May you prosper, and I love you, and God bless you. Also, I forgot to add the part because God wanted me to mention everything up until now, almost. So, God told me to go now, you know, like, he, he will provide the way if I go now in my older videos that I was being disobedient to. But after I got on the train and got to this new area, I felt so discouraged because I didn't know what the heck was going on. Like, I didn't know exactly what God wanted me to do. I felt so like, discouraged. I was like, Lord, do you even remember where I just came from? Like, do you see me, Lord? Like, I just need to know that you see me. And like, my heart was so grieved and I was just... I was just so burdened right now because I'm like, I don't want this. I don't want <laughs> Lord, I, was, I just want to be a nobody, okay? I don't want this. I'm sorry. I don't want to, I don't want to be famous. I don't. I, I really don't. But um, anyways, I had to be instantly obedient. So I got off the train. I went to this new area. And God is so good because immediately as I got off the bus station, I mean the train station, um, and I got into this uh, bus station at this area that I was in, I felt this peace. I'm like, Lord, if this is your will, you're going to make stuff work out me. I'm sorry. I did not. <laughs> But like, I think that does be what I would do before. You have to, like, you, you literally have to. I need somebody. Send me someone, Lord. Something. I don't care. Just get me off of this discouragement cycle that I've been going through, this constant disappointment. Like, just, Lord, help me, okay? I need help. And so, um, like, clear my mind. Help me, Jesus. Right? And so, as I got into this bus station, immediately stuff just started going in order. Like, people from nowhere, strangers started noticing me. So, like, you know how it's saying, like, you're going to be famous and known and vulnerable, but God is going to protect them. Strangers started looking at me at that bus station. They were offering to help me. They were like, oh, my gosh, I would do this for you. Like, did you need this? And I'm like, no, girl, I'm okay. It was a guy, like, people who saw me was like, wow, something is different about you. And believe it or not, it goes right with the, um, I posted a video where they deleted it, which I wish they didn't, but it was uh, with my personal trainer, my personal mentor, uh, where the Bible saying it say, I was sending you a prophet. And the name of it, uh, the name of her channel is called A Fresh Word. And um, it was a post that she made that said, God says now. I keep hearing now, like we kept talking about now, but her post said, God says now. I'm like, Lord, not again. But anyway, she was saying that God is putting it on our hearts as a mission to pray for generations to come, to intercede, to take authority. This was before the dream, of course, um, and to take authority. And once you step into that calling, um, people are going to notice you. They're going to be like, wow, something different is happening. Like, something's new about her. But you have to, like, all that stuff that I told you with elevation, everything that God was telling you through that, this is how it's going to happen. I'm like, how did God tell her what God told me? 
I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna be praying for dinner. She's to call. I don't know why I'm just praying in general. Um, and so, mind you, these people are looking at me. They were just noticing me. And they were like, I will help you get to where you need to go. Like, what do you need? Like, are you okay? I know you're here, but like, what's going on? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm just trying to do such and such and such and such. Um, and so later that day, I forgot about my prayer about that. I was send someone. And there was this guy who like kind of noticed that his light was so bright. I'm like, I mean, it, it was so bright. Okay. He was an older guy, you know, and his light was so bright. He was an older white man. He was just so bright. I was like, wow, this man looks like he's a 20-year-old spirit, but in a 50-year-old, 80-year-old body. Okay. I was like, what the heck is going on? And I'm just seeing everything change before my eyes. Okay, it's amazing. And so I was just in this place of discouragement, but I was trying to fake a smile. I was like, uh, okay, I'm going to fake this smile. You know, I feel like I'm going to know about or whatever, which is really hard, but, you know. Meanwhile, this guy who was talking to people and they were trying to figure out who I am, where I came from, where I was, and I'm like, I'm not trying to put that information out there. Just know I'm a nobody, okay, I'm here, whatever. I don't know what I'm doing, but okay. You know, so I was trying to like alleviate the conversation because they were asking me far too many questions. And so this guy, okay, this guy, he knew, I actually put it in my notes, but unfortunately I cannot go into my notes. Anyway, let me just keep the key point. So I now realize and think that this guy knew everything. He knew everything about me. He was like, so we're trying to figure out who this girl is, of course. And then he walked up to me, he was like, well, I know God is sending somebody here to help us. And I was like, okay, I guess I have to say something. And I was like, well, yeah, God told me to come here to this area. And then that's when he started prophesying to me about what God was doing. He was like, I know it may not make sense now, but remember when Jesus, uh, when God led Jesus to the wilderness, that didn't make sense for where he was coming from and from the people he was teaching. But he said, um, God is trusting, like basically everything that the prophets were saying, like God is trusting you with this. So if you came from a high area, but it seemed like you're coming to a low area, God is trusting you with that to lead. And then he said, if you're coming from a low area to a higher area, he said, remember where you come from so you can be humble. And then he was like, wow. He looked at me with his eyes and it was like his eyes just kind of stayed out and he was smiling. And he said, wow, God's hand is really on you. And then he kept prophesying and I started getting teary-eyed. I was like, yeah, I heard this constantly, but he kept saying, I have not seen what God is about to do in your life. God is about to do something you never even thought happened. Like, he kept saying that in so many words. And I just got teary-eyed. I was just like, oh my gosh, I really needed that. Like, I received that. God was just putting me in. Bring around the rosies. I don't know. Like, I was just going through it. Okay, I was going through it. And I'm like, Lord, if you don't send somebody, I don't think my faith. <laughs> I say you don't run in after a weary, you should walk in my faith. This is not just when you wait on God, but this is your faith. I'm like, Lord, my faith. Is going to go weary. I am going to come to a place that I don't even want to be at where I'm going to settle. And, and God just kind of sent that man to me to remind me that this is God's infinite new thing for you, you know? Like, God's infinite reward is literally infinite reward, but <clears throat> this is this right here is going to be infinite being manifested to you. Like, that mystery that you become free with of knowledge is now physically starting to be manifested to you. I just have not seen. You don't even know. That's what he was saying. I'm like, well, everything God's been revealed to me, I don't know. This is all one big series for me, okay? I like, well, yeah, but, you know, he was like, wow, God has his hand on you. And I'm like, okay. I was like, Lord, I don't know what you're doing, but I'm going to be equally obedient to you. I'm going to trust you. And then my faith became renewed. It just, it just, like, nothing even happened. It was like, God just touched me. And I was, I was new, so. Yeah, mind you, I just felt that, um, I don't know, I just, I don't want to do this. Okay, I did not want to come here, come on here and talk about that. But I was always in prayer. My eyes started to tear up. I felt the love of God giving me peace to talk about the situation. Because I was, I was going back over my old videos. I'm like, what is so much stuff I didn't cover? You know, things are answered questions. And I'm like, so I was like, you gotta talk about it. It's gonna make sense as you talk about it. I'm gonna speak through you on this. It's a story because you really don't know what I'm doing. So you have to keep, like, the people in the Bible and the Old Testament from the New Testament. I know that it was my old post. When I read it, it didn't make sense. But I was like, I love how God is just confirming some of my older videos over time. Just like how Jesus said that I come not to change the law, but to fulfill it. Because God's law, God's word is so big, it's so powerful that one mind, one lifetime cannot fulfill it all. That's why even though we go in the Bible, we still have to read to get new re revelations. So people keep the Bible to keep records of people's lives in there in order to say, like, I was always wondering, like, I repeated, don't kill, but, like, kill. Or, like, God used David to kill, but don't kill. You know, like, stuff like that. Or how God would kind of sugarcoat forgiving and stuff like that. And then how God would sugarcoat the laws to saying love is the law. Like, I, how you, how I am towards me fulfills the law. It takes out all condemnation. And I realized that it's not just one of those stories, it's not just one particular law. It's, it's literally a relationship. Like, we cannot get it all processed in one word where we just can't sin and we know not to sin. It's a relationship that has to keep cleansing us from our sin, help us understand, you know, it will be fulfilled. His word and his promise over our lives will be fulfilled in time. You know, like there is no condemnation. If the, if the Bible just ended with Abraham's laws, why would we need Jesus with no condemnation? You know, and that's that's why that's why the Bible says what it says, and it is true. You know, God is using you in your lifetime right now, right now. He is using you in your lifetime right now to fulfill 
and Allah to fulfill his promises word is all a big series because it all his word is all belonging to him and your life is really not your own you are playing a part of God's story and it may not make sense to you right now but just trust that God hands is on you and he is trusting you with his spirit do not fall into temptation do not fall for sin if you fall into get back up you know like the bible talks about a righteous man falls seven times but rises up again but a wicked man falls once under calamity get back up god is still doing it he's still working it is all a big series so i encourage you guys to pray talk to god about it ask god what his will is for your life i know sometimes like we may feel like oh god is leaving me here to do this or god is leaving me there to do that but make sure that what you're doing and what you're spending your time in is exactly what god is calling you to do in this specific moment right now in order to prevent delay a lot of times we volunteer ourselves into stuff that we're not even called to do right now we may be called to do something totally different you know but we're trying to find that and you know it's one thing to try to find it in third parties but it's another thing of just becoming it and being obedient and allowing god to fulfill his word through you not being able to run away from it because you want to be instantly obedient to what god is calling you to do you know um Paul was called to speak to people, but David was called to be a king and slay nations. And he worshiped God. That was how he developed his gift was to what? It was to worship God, it was to praise God, you know? So just know that, um, yeah, just like how God chose David to play a specific role to be a king in leadership. God might be calling somebody else to mop floors, I mean, to be a servant. So I just like keep hearing God at certain, and I need to be instantly obedient more. Sometimes I'd be like, well, I'm going to talk about this, but, you know, the time is coming where the secrets are being revealed, so I have to. Um, so yeah, be blessed, beloved. I pray that God's will may be revealed in your life and that you may know and that it may be visible to you and your faith will be renewed. And yeah, God bless you. And may you prosper and prosper more abundantly.